In a previous video, we computed line integrals with respect to arc length. These line integrals were computed over curves in the plane, and the ds represented the arc length. In this video, we'll compute a different kind of line integral. Again, it's over a curve in the plane, and we're integrating a function, but this time we're integrating with respect to x or with respect to y. In this video, we computed line integrals with respect to x and with respect to y by first parameterizing the curve, c, and writing everything in terms of the parameter. To compute the line integral of a function over a curve with respect to x or y, we first have to parameterize the curve. Then, like when we were doing line integrals with respect to arc length, the next step is to write everything in terms of the parameter, t. So we put our bounds of integration in terms of t. We write x and y in terms of their formulas in terms of t. And finally, we need to write dx in terms of t. Using differential notation, when x is a function of t, then dx is going to equal x prime of t dt. So substituting in x prime of t dt for dx gives us our definition of the line integral with respect to x. And we have a similar formula when we integrate with respect to y. The integral between the t bounds of f, where x is written in terms of t and y is written in terms of t, and then dy is y prime of t dt. Finally, if we want to compute a line integral of this form that has both a dx component and a dy component, we just compute it by breaking up the integral into two parts. So we write this as the integral of the dx part plus the integral of the dy part, and then we use the preceding two formulas to rewrite those in terms of t. This will all make a lot more sense once we do an example. The last step in doing these line integrals, once we've got everything in terms of the parameter t, we just integrate using regular Calculus 1 techniques. Although our first step was to parameterize the curve, there are lots of ways of doing this, and it certainly looks like the integral might depend on the functions we use to parameterize it. It turns out that the line integral with respect to x and the line integral with respect to y are independent of the parameterization. It doesn't matter what parameterization you use, you still get the same answer provided that the parameterizations traverse C in the same direction. So you want both your parameterizations to go in the direction of the arrow this way, or both go in the opposite direction. If one goes in one direction and one goes the opposite direction, then your integrals end up being the negatives of each other. Now that we've got the definitions written out in the abstract, let's bring some life to them with an example. So we want to compute the integral of y dx plus x dy over the curve c, where c is the line segment between these two points. There are many ways to parameterize the line segment, but a natural parameterization is to let x of t be 1 plus 3t and y of t be negative 1 plus 4t. I came up with those parameterizations by starting at the first point, where x is 1 and y is negative 1, and then looking at how fast x has to go to travel between its first value of 1 and its last value of 4 in unit time. It has to go 3 units in one, say, one second, so that's sort of a, a, a speed of 3 units per second. That gives me the 1 plus 3t. And and y, on the other hand, has to go all the way from negative 1 to 3, so that's 4 units in a second. So that's a speed of 4 units per second, so that gives us the negative 1 plus 4t for the parameterization of y. One convenient thing about this parameterization is that t is going to range in between 0 and 1. Notice that when t is 0, I'm at this initial point where x is 1, y is negative 1, and when t is 1, I've gone all the way to the end where x is 4 and y is 3. Now based on the definitions on the previous page, we can write this integral by breaking it up into two pieces. 
So we can write it as the integral of y dx plus the integral of x dy. Now we can resolve these two integrals by writing everything in terms of t. We've already got y and x written in terms of t, but we need dx and dy. So I'll go ahead and write those down. Let's see, dx is going to be x prime of t dt, so that's going to be the derivative of x with respect to t is just 3, so that's 3 dt. Similarly, dy is going to be y prime of t dt, so dy, that's the derivative of y with respect to t, that's just 4 dt. Now we're ready to substitute in and write everything in terms of t. So first, we can write our bounds of integration in terms of t. It goes from t equals 0 to t equals 1. y, the formula of y with, in terms of t is negative 1 plus 4t, and we saw that dx is just 3 dt. The second integral resolves similarly. t goes from 0 to 1. x is equal to 1 plus 3t and dy we calculated as 4 dt. From here we have a pretty routine integration problem. I'll pull out the 3 and integrate to get minus t plus 2t squared. And I'll pull out the 4 and integrate to get t plus 3t squared over 2. Evaluating gives an answer of 13. In this video, we worked out integrals over a curve C with respect to X and with respect to Y by first parameterizing the curve C and then using the parameterization to write everything in terms of the parameter T. By doing this, we got the following formulas. These formulas are easy to remember if you remember the differential notation that DX is X prime of T dt and DY is Y prime of T dt.